<laughs> confirm that. Sounds good. Hi. Uh, do you see us, Alicia? I do not see us on the YouTube page now. All right, not yet. Probably a little bit of a delay. Cool. I think there we are. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex. I am here with the great Alicia. Alicia, hello. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. Cool. And we are here today to demo Code Challenges, one of the new features that we just introduced uh, to the website. So hello, everyone. We're live on YouTube and I think Facebook and Twitter and even Twitch. Uh, if you're if you're watching this, uh, Alicia and I are looking at the YouTube chat right now. Um, so welcome. Feel free to post questions in the chat. Feel free to, feel free to say hi in the chat. We'll keep an eye on that as we're going. Uh, this will also be posted on YouTube after the fact. And so if you miss this or have to run, uh, don't worry. You can always catch it on the YouTube after the fact. And if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, hello as well. Um, Cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is going to be just a half hour session, so we have a lot to get through. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we are here today to talk about uh, code challenges. Um, let me first quickly navigate to the code challenge page uh, on Code Academy, and then we can talk a little bit about what these are. So these are found up in the resources tab, and these are the challenges. And so when we go here, you'll see that we have a bunch of different code challenges and you can sort them by three different languages right now. So we have them in Python, JavaScript, and Java. Before we get too far, Alicia, do you wanna kind of describe what code challenges are, how they might be useful, um, why people might be interested in using them, stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. So basically code challenges are meant to emulate a whiteboarding question. Um, you know, you can take paths to get ready for interviews, but you actually wanna get the practice with doing the whiteboard questions themselves. Um, and these are created to be taken after completing the interview prep paths, or if you think you have all the content ready, um, you can just dive right in. Basically, we give you the question, we give you the workspace and you're answering it. We give you a sample input and output, and then we test your inputs against what we expect. And we tell you if you pass or not, but it's really free structure. It's for you to actually kind of formulate your own thinking as you would in a real whiteboarding question. Yeah, and so I think if, if folks have never had a whiteboarding question or never had a technical interview, these are really common where you're kind of asked to do a coding challenge. This coding challenge has multiple solutions. There's probably uh, degrees of um, cleverness that you can implement in these uh, challenges where some, like there's probably a kind of naive solution and then if you're in that interview, they're gonna kind of push you to get to more clever or a faster or a better solution. Um, and there's tons and tons and tons of these ty types of questions out there. And so this is a great way to practice that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at chat and I see a couple of good questions already. Uh, uh, when can we expect code challenges for SQL? Uh, I think SQL is like a little bit of a different beast where SQL questions are probably not as much about algorithmic complexity and uh, solve this coding problem. They're probably a little bit, it's, it's probably just a, a little bit of a different interview format, um, but that would be an interesting one to find. Um, let me go ahead and demo one of these in particular. Uh, I've prepped the first one that we have under Java prime number finder. And so this will give you a little bit of a taste of what these code challenges are like. Um, this is a good example where there are again, kind of varying levels of complexity to the solution that you might write. And so this question in particular is telling you, okay, we want you to write a function named prime finder that finds all of the numbers n uh, between one and n that are prime. So for example, if you do prime, prime, prime finder of 13, it's going to give you two, three, five, seven, 11, and 13. Um, like Alicia was saying, Really, one of the things that already existed on Codecademy before developing these were giant paths helping you get prepared for technical interviews. And so if you encounter this problem and are a little bit stuck on uh, how to tackle it, we think that these technical interview paths are really a great place to start where, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a real beginner at coding, it will walk you through some of the basics, some of these basic data structures, start talking, it will start talking about um, algorithmic complexity. 
And then uh, what's really kind of interesting is ultimately we get into kind of some of the more clever solutions for some of these projects. So in particular, the reason why I'm, I'm showing off Prime Number Finder is at the end of this path, at this uh, technical, technical interview path, we have this article that uh, kind of walks you through a way to cleverly solve this prime number finder. Um, I, I don't even know how to say this. Uh, Alicia, can you pronounce it or no? <laughs> Eratosthenes, I believe. Yeah. So this is a clever way of finding prime numbers. There's a there's kind of a fun gif here to, to show how that process works. Um, so I think that this is uh, this is a great example of if you get stuck on some of these technical interview problems, there's probably something in this path that will help you get unstuck. Um, Alicia, in this uh, in this code challenge itself, what are some of the like features that uh, are noteworthy? I guess, or what should we highlight about this new code challenge feature? Yeah. So um, in the question itself, one of the things we do is we link you to the path um, in case you want more places to brush up. For some of them, we link to a specific lesson or article. We also talk about where this question has been asked because we want to make sure that we're giving you questions that are based in real world problems. So this one was asked at Facebook um, and I'm sure other places as well. And namely, we give you something like for Prime Finder 13, we tell you what it should return to give you an example so you know what you're working off of. And then basically the biggest thing is a different UI. So there's an output and then there's a test case where like you actually test your code so you can run it without testing it first. Yeah, I think uh, let's demo that test case. And uh, I'm sorry to chat, but I'm not gonna code this up live. I have the solution code, uh, I have one solution uh, copied in a note stock over here. Um, we can actually even kind of like talk through this solution. I think that it's, um, it's a little bit interesting and it's a good example of ways in which you can solve these problems in different ways. Um, this is kind of a brute forcey or naive solution where um, essentially I'm looking through all of the numbers from one to N. So I'm gonna say, okay, is, is one prime, is two prime, is three prime, is four, four prime, and so on. And then in order to figure out if it's prime, I'm gonna loop through all of the numbers from one to N again, or from uh, technically from N to one and see if it's divisible. And if it's only divisible by itself and one, then it's prime. Um, I, I, this is this is all a little bit like in the weeds of this particular problem. So like, don't worry if um, all of this is foreign to you, if you uh, don't know Java, if you're super intimidated by, uh, you know, all of this code. Again, that's kind of what the technical interview path is preparing you for, um, for doing this kind of stuff. Um, but if I go ahead and run my code, so yeah, run my code, you can see that my test output uh, was just run, so I, I called my function with 13. I can change this to, you know, 20 if I wanted to. Run my code. There are all the primes between one and 20, and then uh, I can also test my code. So we have uh, we have tests that are kind of hidden on the back end that will check to see if what if the function that you've written is actually doing what uh, the prompt is asking you to do. So uh, let me actually get this incorrect. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to screw this up. So if I run this, you'll see this is now incorrect. These are not the prime numbers between 0 and 20. And so if I test my code, you'll see that, OK, 0 out of 5 tests have passed. But if I accurately solve the problem, got all of our tests um, have passed. So again, that's it's a little bit similar to like lessons in Codecademy, right? We we have this um, testing framework; it it exists on Codecademy, but um, every single one of these interview um, problems are going to have five tests behind the scenes. They're all going to be testing your code regardless of implementation. So right, you could have solved this problem in a completely different way, and um, the test will either pass or not pass. Um, so it, it's a little bit different there. After you pass the challenge, we give you the option to submit the challenge. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Essentially, um, the idea behind submitting the challenge is now that you've solved it, 
Maybe you want to clean up your code a little bit. Maybe you want to put comments. Maybe you want to describe what you're doing. Again, kind of thinking through the technical interview itself of if you just coded this up in a technical interview, you're not really going to be, the interview doesn't end there, right? You're going to be asked to explain what you did, explain your thought process. What are the drawbacks of this, this solution? What are the advantages of this solution? Um, right, you need to be able to explain your work. And so we wanted to give you an opportunity to also practice that portion of the interview. And so we do this through the forums. So you can copy your code and then you can go to the challenge forums. And this will be a place where other people who have um, solved this challenge can post their, their solution. So you can see already um, this launched super recently. So um, there aren't a, a ton of people in here, but you know, there's a, uh, someone posted this, this solution two days ago, looks like a kind of a similar solution to mine, two for loops, they're using this break statement, which I didn't use, so slightly different. Um, this person is same kind of thing, nested for loops. Um, so you can see that there are a lot of different uh, implementations uh, and solutions to this challenge. And so we're really hoping that people kind of discuss and chat with each other and uh, talk about their best solution. Alicia, any questions from the chat that we should uh, tackle? Um, most of the questions are regarding when new languages will be popping up. Um, and I think Q1 of next year is probably the best bet. Yeah, I, I know that um, right now we are, uh, Alicia and myself and our team are working on building out more of these. So right now we have a total of 15 per language. Um, we are building out another 15 um, with just more variety of types of questions, more data structures, more kind of like algorithmic strategies that you can that can you can, that you can use. Um, so really just trying to get a good variety of these kind of questions. Um, let me take a look at my notes. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the other things, uh, this is like perhaps a little bit self-explanatory, but one of the other things that I wanted to note, and let me get back to the code challenge itself. Um, this will load. Can you not click into it? I think it's I think it's trying to load. Let me uh, open up a different one. Let me try. And Alicia, if you want to try loading one up, you can uh, you can potentially screen share. Uh, the, the thing that I wanted to demo was that um, the the um, code editor that we have, and it looks like. It's just loaded. Um, the code editor that we have, we obviously have these back end tests that are telling you if you've got something correct or incorrect. But um, in our output terminal, this can this can also give you any information that you want, including um, errors and debugging, right? So if I make an error, let's say I forget that I'm working in Java here and I try to print hello um, and I run my code, you can see that kind of your usual error message pops up. So uh, you'll get lots of feedback on when you're actually trying to code out this challenge beyond our test cases that are either passing or failing. Um, yeah, and, and actually this is a good example of um, this question in particular uh, is relevant to heaps. And so we, we link you out to um, the lesson that we have on heaps in, in that particular lesson. Cool. Um, I think that that is pretty much all we wanted to show off. Um, we're happy to take any questions from the chat if there are any. Um, but if not, this can be a, a short live stream. Um, so if anyone has questions in the YouTube chat, and you know what, let me actually open up. Try to find Twitter, Facebook as well. Nothing so far in the chat yet. 
Okay, cool. Well, then maybe we will call it there. Um, we're super excited about this feature. I think that it's a next great step towards Codecademy really helping you prepare for um, landing a new job, whether you're an upskiller or whether you're um, moving into tech for the first time. Uh, you know, previously we've had all of this curriculum, we've had all of these great paths that are that are huge. And you know, if you if you went through this entire path, you would certainly learn a lot about um, how to prepare for these technical interviews. But we never really had anything that tried to emulate that technical interview process. Um, and so, yeah, we're really excited about this kind of the next step in that career journey that we're trying to uh, trying to make. So, yeah, um, feel free to leave comments on this YouTube video if you have feedback about code challenges. Um, yeah, and I hope I hope a lot of you start using it and posting to those um, to those forums. Um, cool. All right. With that, Alicia, I think we'll we'll call it there. So thank you everyone for checking this out and we will see you later.